Hello guys and welcome to my beginner's guide to prison architects. In uh, this episode we're going to be covering dormitories, which is a new room type which has been added to the game. Uh, this is added in update 1, which is the first update after the 1.0 release of the game. So as I've mentioned before, they are continuing to update this game. It's going to go back to a monthly schedule. It's a little bit off now because of the release and because of Christmas, but in the new year it should be the end of every month I believe they will update and add something new to the game or change things uh, they have changed the way that um, escape mode works they've sort of nerfed shotguns a little bit and now they have limited ammo and they've changed a few other bits and pieces but we're, we're here to do the dormitories so let's uh, crack on to that now I have did record this video already and I got prisoners in at the end just for a bit of fun and obviously it didn't go well because this prison is not set up at all for prisoners. But I didn't have a save of this before I got the prisoners in. I messed that up as well. So we're going to have to um, struggle on with all these injured inmates that all need to go into solitary because they're kicking off. This, this is a terrible, terrible prison. So this is the new room type, dormitories. Um, down here. Our dormitories are a variable sized room for housing multiple prisoners. The bigger the dormitory, the more prisoners it can house. Its room requirements are the same as cells, and they are a 2 by 3 of minimum size. They've got to be enclosed, or surrounded by walls and a door. They'll be indoors, they'll have a bed or a bunk bed, which is the new item I'll cover in just a second, and they've got to have a toilet in them. Now they do still have cells in the game, which function exactly the same way as they used to do. Change this back to a cell. Oh no, it's got a bunk bed in it. Uh, cells can't have bunk beds in them, there's one thing that... Well, that hasn't changed. Cells, uh, bunk beds are new as well. Yeah, cells can't have bunk beds. Dormitories can. So the way the dormitories worked, because this confused me when I first started messing around with them, is that each prisoner, well, each dormitory can house more than one prisoner. I mean, this one here has a bunk bed in it, but it only houses one prisoner at a time. That's because each prisoner needs four spaces. Well, so four spaces, like floor spaces, per dormitory. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Um, yeah, each dormitory needs four spaces in it or per prisoner. So this one here is a standard cell size, two by three, where it has six spaces on the floor. Six spaces. I call them spaces so we don't get confused with cells. Um, so it will only house one prisoner. They need at least four the other two are almost wasted, as it were. So, although this has a bunk bed in it, it will only house one prisoner. So, the next one I built was a 2x4 space in the middle, at least. And it's slightly big on the outside, it's 4x6 on the outside, but it's 2x4 in the middle, which gives it 8 spaces, which will allow me to cram two prisoners into this one dormitory and again you're always sort of rounding down so this one is two spaces larger than this one but that's not enough still it still only fit two four spaces in there makes sense you can't go up to 12 so this one will only house two prisoners as well uh, this one again is too bigger, so this will actually house three prisoners. Uh, dormitories can either have bunk beds or single beds. So you can do it in different ways. I mean, this will fit three prisoners in. So I've got three single beds down here on this side. And by two. This, this one is the same size. And I've got a double bed, a bunk bed, and a single bed. So this is again the three prisoners capacity that this one will fit in. You can do it with single beds or you can do it with bunk beds to save yourself a little bit of space. Not... Well, yes, in this example. 
you see we've only got two beds in here technically and we've got three in this one so we've got a little bit more space in here to put all the things in and I went a little bit larger i test how it works so this one here is a three by three this is sort of similar to a single cell design and you can actually fit two prisoners in this three by three space it goes up to nine So I can see these being quite fun to play around with. I mean, these are sort of cell designs in the classical cell designs like these used to be. How we got used to building cells, or at least how I got used to building cells. But you could build a whole line of cells this size, or cells this size, this size, and get a few more prisoners in. You can also go a little bit crazier. Build things like this. So this is a 5x5. Five five. We'll give it 25 spaces in the middle, which will allow us to fit six prisoners in here. Guards in here. I have fog of war turned on so you can't see what's going on. I don't think there's anyone. I'm all crammed in the yard at the minute. I know there's a couple of guys in here. So yeah, you can get six prisoners into this cell block, or this cell room dormitory. And then again, I'm a little bit larger. This one here is a 6x6. Six six. It'll fit 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 in a 6x6. Six six. You can These are the maximum you can put in there. I have tried it with more beds, and they just become unused after a while. And the next one I did was a 7x7. Seven seven. See a pattern emerging here. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 prisoners. And then I've got a pool table in this one for these lucky prisoners who get to live in this cell. They get a pool table. Oh, it's kicking off again. Just going to ignore that. And then here I've got an 8x8. Eight eight. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 prisoners in this 8x8 eight eight cell. I mean, all these cells only have one toilet in them, which causes an issue. There's many, many issues with this prison. I mean, that was one of them that I think the bowels need. Oh, it's not terrible at the minute. I mean, they have a lot of free time in this regime, a lot of lock-up time, so I'm guessing that's why it's not as bad as it probably should be. See, everything else is maxed out because I don't even have showers in this prison. Well, prisoners trying to escape there. So yeah, you will have to think about putting more toilets in, building larger shower facilities if you're going to start using these dormitories and trying to get a lot of prisoners in here. And then I went proper crazy over here. You can see, this is probably where it's kicked off the most. I got myself a 23 by 23. So that is a... Do the maths on that. Um, 23 by 23. So let me get my calculator out. 23 by 23. Give us a 529 spaces in the centre. Right. And then if we divide that by 4. I guess 132.25, so we ran that down, and this block here will house 132 prisoners. It's quite impressive for 25 by 25 building, the outside dimensions. Usually that's the sort of maximum I would get in my prison, my entire prison. When you get other rooms in, when you get visitation, and you get an armory, a staff room, um, chapel, kennels, morgues, security, infirmaries. When you get all of that other stuff in, you sort of start running out of space. So although we don't have anything else built in this, we just went for cells basically, or dorms, we have a capacity of 215. I mean, it doesn't work. As you can see from all these people who are injured and are waiting solitary. I had to build a solitary just to try and process some of these guys a little bit. But yeah, 
So it's going to allow you to build much larger prisons or much larger capacities while still remaining in a small prison. This is only a small starting prison. You won't have to expand out to get up to crazy numbers of prisoners. Uh, you will have to think a little bit more about toilets and such. I haven't done here. But I will be building a prison, I think, with using dormitories to try and cram people in. Try and get more of a feel for how it works in the real game. I mean, if you look at this, this is ridiculous. I've got one table under this mass of prisoners to feed everybody. <laughs> so that's obviously not working at all. And they have also, with this, changed the room quality. So if you go to logistics, uh, logistics is unlocked through prison labour. I've got prison labour unlocked here. It doesn't quite fall under the prison labour, but that's how you unlock logistics, and that's the tab it's in. So you go to your room quality. You'll now see that rooms are graded as they were before. Um, I don't think I've mentioned this. Remember now. I'll go through it briefly. The higher the grading, the happier the prisoners in that cell will be. So this is currently a grade 2. Else you know, so we've got a grade 3 here. So these prisoners will be happier because they'll be in a grade 3 dormitory. Just grade zeros, which is not good. Grade ones and twos. Yeah, basically, every day the prisoner doesn't kick off, he gets entitled to a better room. So he starts off on one, I believe. And then if he doesn't kick off for a day, he gets entitled to a quality two room, or grade two room, and then a grade three room, and a grade four room, and so on up to ten. Now it used to just be the amount of things you had in a cell. Of dormitory still. Mm. So if you put a TV, a radio, a bookshelf, chair, desk, full table wasn't on there, a shower head, you got all of those things in the cell that would increase the grade of that cell. But now it works on a per prisoner basis. And this runs on the current occupancy of the cell, not the maximum occupancy. So for this to get a point, it's got one point for having at least six squares per prisoner. So for these 71 prisoners in here, they get six squares each. You get another point if you made that up to 12, another point for that being 18. But for 132 prisoners in one block, 18 squares each. That's a lot of squares. I mean, when this is full, it'll probably drop back down to a zero, I would guess. And then get another point for shower heads. So one shower head per four prisoners. Makes it a little bit more useful than it was before. You only have to put one shower head in for four prisoners rather than one shower head for one prisoner. And one bookshelf per four prisoners, one chair per four prisoners. One pool table for four prisoners, and one outdoor window per eight prisoners. I think the easiest way to sort of knock this one up would be to do that. And just probably don't need that many windows, but I've got unlimited funds on at the minute. So I don't care about spending money. I have about 30 workmen running around for me as well load of janitors as you can see but this isn't a functioning prison so when we put all these windows in it's got room quality there we go quite quickly it saw yourself out and we got another point for having one outdoor window per eight prisoners i think windows are going to be the easiest way to boost grades in large prisons uh, large dormitories like this one at least you could also squash the beds up a little bit, not leave as much space between them. And then get more bookshelves, you'd have more space to put more things in. I mean, there's a lot of wasted space in this design. I'm not used to designing cells, to be honest. All my cells usually look like this dormitory here. They'd all look exactly the same, and I'd just copy it across. But now they've changed it to dormitories. I'm going to have to fiddle around, so... It's going to be fun. It's going to be fine for me. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. If you notice here, uh, you only see the top prisoner. So the prisoners, there is two prisoners sleeping in this cell. 
but you only see the top one. So these bunk beds have four prisoners in them, but only you only see the top one, which isn't really much of an issue. Fortunately, you oh you can click. You just have to click slightly underneath. You can click on both prisoners while they're in the um, bunk beds. Prisoner, better stone. Only one prisoner in there. Mm. Not sure if it's working the other way around when you put them vertically. They're all single beds. Now there's two prisoners in here. I can't click on the second one. So it's not much of an issue, but you want to find someone who was sleeping on the bottom of a bunk bed, it might be a bit tricky to do while they're sleeping. You no, know, just wait until they wake up or search them. There's so this prisoner that will get him out of bed. And I should better click on the prison face. So again, that's not much of a problem. Yeah, it's gonna give us some interesting... It's gonna give me some interesting ideas for cells and dormitories. Try and cram more prisoners in and raise this max capacity up. Um, this will impact other things. So we have 215 prisoners. We are going to need quite a large canteen for this. And we're also going to need a large shower block. Make sure we have enough amenities for all the prisoners to use. I mean, this is probably one of the best examples here. We have a lot of free space, so we could... Maybe we got in some more toilets like so. Uh, we could probably get some PDs in as well. Uh, what else would they like in their cells? Uh, we could get a pool table in here. Probably bang a few phone booths in, like so, say. We can start fulfilling their needs while they're in the cell itself. But while they're in lock-up time, I'd better use these phone booths and this pool table and these TVs. Even build a small shower into one corner or something like that. We can try and fulfill more of their needs while they're in the dormitory rather than having separate rooms to do this. You can see I put a waste bench in here. I don't know if anyone will be using it. It's sleep time at the minute. Sleep up time a little bit too hard. Uh, everyone's asleep. They're probably not going to be using it. They have other more pressing needs, such as family, food, recreation, freedom. So yeah, this prison isn't working well. Oh, having dormitories like this will also affect their privacy needs. Because they won't get the privacy they would get in a single cell. They will always have other prisoners around them, even when they're in lock-up and sleep time. So this is going to bring the privacy need more into the fray. Start sort of noticing this a little bit more, I believe. Before, it didn't really become a problem for me. It's when you stuck them into sleep time or lock-up time, they all went to their individual cells and got their privacy then. So yeah, that could start becoming more of an issue. Uh, one other thing I want to cover quickly is the they have changed the way intake works. So it used to just look like this, but now they've added these buttons on the bottom. So you can close your intake without messing around with your ratios. Just keep it on closed. Click of a button rather than messing about. Uh, you've got fill capacity, which will bring in enough prisoners to fill me up to my maximum capacity. Here's another 69 prisoners, will put us up to the 215 mark. And then when prisoners, well, in this prison, inevitably die or escape, then it will just bump them up again. So if we have five deaths tomorrow, the next day we'll get five prisoners in, so it's all, always keep your prison full. Which is very useful, very handy. Let's stop you sort of micromanaging this. Um, you have total prisoners, so you can set a total of prisoners you want in the prison. So if I wanted 15 cells to be protective custody, say, or 15 beds to be protective custody, I can't say cells anymore because you can get more than one person in a cell or a dormitory. I could say I want 200 prisoners maximum all the time 
and then that would give me a few spare beds for any prisoners that came in that needed to be shifted to shifted to protective custody straight away. I wouldn't be full all the time. I'd have like a fifteen spaces, fifteen free beds for prisoners. Or if you run with the events on, there is an event which brings a load of new prisoners into your prison. So you could leave it lowered a little bit just for that. Um, the next one is number per day. So you can set a number of prisoners you want to receive each day. I don't think 200 and... is a great amount of prisoners to receive each day. Oh, you can go as many as you want. So we can go up to, say, we wanted to get 10 prisoners in a day. I'm not quite sure why you'd use this one. Maybe if you wanted to set yourself a challenge, you'd have the continuous intakes. So you'd always have 10 prisoners coming in each day and you'd have to expand quickly enough to fill them up. And then you would have prisoners leaving, so that would alleviate some of the problems you'd eventually face. But a nice feature. I'm not too sure why I would personally use it. And then the last one is all available. So that will just get you all the prisoners you currently have available. Section up here. Yeah, and this is good if you, like me, you build the prison first without getting any prisoners in and make use of the grant system. Build a massive prison, then fill it at the end. You can just click this and you will get all the prisoners in. As many prisoners as you can in, in one go. So I think the most useful ones are going to be closed, build capacity and total prisons. Ah, so that is all they have changed in this update. Uh, there's another update towards the end of December, or is it? It's the 16th or the 17th of December. It'll be the Friday around that date. So I'll give them a little bit of time off for Christmas. They have worked hard. And I look forward to seeing what that brings. I think the next prison I'm going to do is going to be using dormitories, as I said, and try and get a feel for how they actually work in a prison that's designed they well are better than this is. Okay, this just really doesn't work at all. It was only for testing purposes. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna allow me to come up with some different cell designs and some new ideas of how we can raise this capacity up, cram as many people in as we can and make a decent cash flow out of the next prison, hopefully. That's what I was trying to do. Try and make money. And also get reform. Oh, we don't have any prisoners released. Yeah, I try. It's mainly about the money, to be honest, for me. I know some people are all about the reform, but... Great thing about a sandbox game, you can play it however you want. There is no right way and there is no wrong way. So, I just want to say um, thank you for everyone who watched this video. If you stuck through to the end, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, thank you to everyone who has subscribed and commented and liked my previous videos. It means a lot to me. I'm always happy when I see on YouTube that I've got another comment or another subscription. Or another like on one of my videos. So thank you very much for that guys. Um, if you have enjoyed this video then please again drop it a like. Or drop me a comment. And that will help other people find this video. And hopefully they can learn how dormitories work as well. Um, if you want to subscribe, then it will let you know when I post videos, because it is a bit sporadic. So, if you click the subscribe button, it will just drop you a message every time I post a video, and you'll keep up to date with the videos I'm posting. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.